All right, Math 3, welcome to the last page of Lesson 6.3. Our first equation here, um, we can see we've got a square root equation. And we've got right, two different orbits that we're talking about. Uh, and plus we know the given radius of the Earth approximately. So we just have to plug in... Uh, 3950 plus 100, work that out. Plug in 3950 plus 300, work that out, and then find out what their difference is. Okay. So for the uh, 3950 plus 100, that's uh, 4050. So I'm going to go ahead and plug 4050 in here. And working that out, so we would have one, and then two, four, and then another ten zeros divided by four thousand fifty, and then we want to square root that. Okay, so we're getting approximately that. Okay, now we're going to do the same for the other orbit. Okay, our other orbit will be um, 300 plus 3950, so that's 4250. So again, work that out. And square root. And we get a little closer to 17,000 on this. Okay. Um, and now the question is, how much greater is the velocity? Well, we need to subtract those two figures, right? So approximately uh, 417 miles per hour. Okay, so there we go. All right, moving on. Uh, we now have, again, an equation that's given to us. I've always felt like those are the easiest problems. When they hand you the equation, you just have to plug values into it. So they, they gave me this equation, um, and then they tell me, hey, let's, let's uh, put 100 and figure out when will that trunk length have an output of 100 inches? So 100 equals the given uh, cube root relationship. So solve that, subtract 17. Divide by 23, and now cube. Okay, working that out, uh, we'll get approximately 47 years, which is actually a reasonable answer for the age of an elephant, right? If you got something like 500, you'd go, oh, this is kind of nonsensical. Uh, but that actually will make sense, so that's reasonable. 
Okay, moving on, next problem. Again, they gave me the nice equation to work with, um, and they told me it varies by about five degrees. So, um, oh, they even plugged that in for me. So that's a piece of cake. I just have to solve. Okay, so I'm gonna have t minus one equals five, t equals 6, t minus 1 equals negative 5, t equals negative 4. So um, the range would be from negative 4 to 6 degrees. All right, moving on. Next problem. Again, real nice. They actually gave me the equation. It's a quadratic equation because, again, we're dealing with a projectile. But they do ask three questions here. Uh, question A, what's the height after 1.5 seconds? Well, simply plug in 1.5. So working that out, um, it looks like, well, I don't have that. So I'll go ahead and mark this out. Looks like we should get 140 feet. Nice clean answer. So letter A, 140 feet. Okay, letter B, what's the maximum height reached by the rocket? Well, this is a quadratic. The A is negative, right? So we have a parabola, right? We have a parabola like that. And they're asking me for the maximum, or in other words, the vertex. Um, we have a couple methods to find the vertex. We could complete the square to find the vertex, uh, or we could use that little shortcut trick. The negative B over 2A will find the input value of the vertex. So that seems like the easiest way to go. Um, when you get to calculus, you'll learn how to use derivatives to find it, which is even easier, but we're not there yet. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and do the negative B over 2A move. So. B is 64, A is negative 16. So I'm going to do negative 64 divided by 2 times negative 16. Negative 64 over negative 32 is 2. So I know the maximum height, right, my vertex, that will occur after 2 seconds. Okay. Now, we, we need to actually find the height. So we're going to have to plug 2 into the equation to find that height. Okay, and working that out, um, we should get 64 plus 80, 144. Okay, so our maximum height, 144 feet. Okay, now letter C. After how many seconds um, will the rocket hit the lake? Well, it'll hit the lake when it has a height of zero. So this is simply asking us to find the zeros, which we have a lot of practice with. Okay, um, I'm noticing I could clean this up. Again, I could make it easier to work with 16, 64, 80. I can divide all of those by a negative 16. And I can see that this factors nicely.
So we get t equals 5 or t equals negative 1. Um, again, this is a real world problem. We have to evaluate if these answers make sense. A time of negative 1 second. So if I go backwards in time, well, that doesn't make sense. So that one's no good. Uh, a time of 5 seconds. That does make sense. So 5 seconds, uh, it will be returning to the lake. Okay, moving on. Our next equation, um, they don't give it to us. So this is a little bit more challenging on our part. We're going to have to figure out the relationship. So it looks like we have a starting amount of $1.50, and we're going to stick with that until we hit 4 ounces. Okay. Uh, once I hit 4 ounces, I'm going to pay an extra buck, and it's going to stay at that until I hit 8 ounces. Once I hit 8 ounces, I'm going to pay an extra buck, and I'm going to stay at that until I hit 12 ounces. So basically, I have a starting amount of a buck fifty, and then for every um, weight, every four ounces after the first four, I'm going to add a dollar. So the equation would be a step function. Okay. So there's my function. When x is, is less than 4, right, I'm paying a buck fifty. This will round down to 0. Once I hit 4, now I pay 250. And it's going to keep rounding down until I hit 8, right? Because 8 divided by 4 is 2. And at that point, this becomes 2, and I'd be paying 350, and so on and so forth. So there's my step function. Uh, now, uh, there's a follow-up question here. I got my model. That's my model. So when they say make a model, it means write a function or an equation. Okay, now use it to figure out how much it would cost to ship a package that weighs 24 ounces. So put 24 into that model. Okay, so 24 divided by 4 is 6. Um, 6 is a clean value, so there's no rounding that takes place. So that's going to equal $7.50. Okay, and my printer printed this on one new piece of paper. But anyway, here's our last problem of the lesson. And this is, again, a nice one in that they give me the equation. Um, so we have a starting amount, 325, right? Initial amount, P naught. Um, and then we have a final amount of $4. So that's the final amount. And we have a rate. So we're going to plug all that in, and we're going to need to solve for T, the time, how long. So $4, initial amount, Uh, remember, 10.5% is 0 0.105. And solve. Okay, take the log or natural log of both sides of your um, equation. You can bring that exponent down now, make it a coefficient. And divide. So my time will be equal to the log of 4 over 3.25 divided by the log of 1.105.
And there we go. Looks like it's uh, just a bit over two years. Okay, so hopefully that helped out. Thanks.